you can get any digital footage looks like he was shot on film by adding on or basically using um, film print emulation which is what we are going to talk about today i'm also going to show you a few mistakes that a lot of beginner makes when they skip the color management in the vinci resolve which is very important because basically you need to tell resolve to basically read what your camera capture and the monitor need to see it accordingly i'm also going to share with you the whole method from me converting this flat footage using um, CST or color space transform also adding on a Cineon log film and then later we're going to pick our favorite film print emulation so as you can see we are ready and let's jump into DaVinci Resolve so as I mentioned the first thing we need to do, we need to go and do our color management. But let me explain. There's so many ways that you can do this in the Vinci Resolve. There is depending on how many cameras they were sh the project was shot with, or how many clips you have from different cameras, your deliverable, or your um, preference as a colorist, and so many other factors. But for me, I'm actually using DaVinci YRGB as my color space and then my uh, timeline color space I'm using DaVinci Y intermediate also with my output color space I am using Rec 709A because I'm, I'm basically doing everything on a Mac and that is so I don't get to get that washed out color when I'm exporting also as you can see We've already done this, so I'm going to go back into my project. And now you can see my node structure, and I don't really complicate it that much. So we do have adjustment, pull, white balance, saturation. We do have basically in um, our parallel node, I do have a few things here that I feel like they deserve attention. So here, we do have the gown that she's wearing uh, which and the towel as well because they are all the same color. And I do also have another one which is the background. So I'm going to touch on the background as well as the product which is basically what she um, have in hand. And if you know much about parallel node, is basically when you stack a few nodes and each allow you to um, work with any color value that you pick and you can increase decrease or basically do what you want that fits with the project that you are working on and here we do have cst which is color space transform and we also have dehancer which is what i'm going to be using but please i want you to let me know if you do not have dehancer i can remake the same um color or the same process by adding a film print emulation using everything built within DaVinci Resolve. So comment below if you do not have the answer and I'll make that video for you. Or oh, here is the last node and I call that pop. Basically every time when I finish color grading, I do have to add a few things based on what the uh, project need. Sometimes it could be contrast pop, it could be noise reduction or so many other things. But the aim of this project, they requested to do almost like a high key but it was shot on film which is basically what i'm going to be doing right now and there's one thing that i need to also let you know so let's say you have all the footage and you don't know what camera it was shot on you can actually go here to your camera roll and you'll be able to access that here as you can see mine my color space is a uh, red white gamma rgb and basically all those information so we're going to come back here to our primaries and everything is ready so let's go into our effect and then we're going to look for the color space transform and we're going to put our transform on as mentioned we need to look for the profile of the camera that we are using don't forget that so obviously that's red and then input gamma we're going to look again for um 
that red log 3g10 and that's that and then output color space obviously we're going to go to rec 709 and then the last one which is output gamma we are going to pick the Cineon uh, log film so now we've added Cineon log film and something that you need to understand about Cineon log film it is the only uh, profile that can actually allow you to see everything that your um, film print emulation has to offer hence why we are using it as i mentioned we are going to be using a uh, dehancer so we need to go into our effect and look for dehancer and now we have added our dehancer as you can see things are changing that is because there's some effects that are already enabled as this one as you can see that is why but we're going to go into the source and then tell the hunter we are dealing with Cineon uh, log film and we're just gonna leave that for now one thing that I'm trying to do I go to uh, my print and I pick the correct uh, film print emulation that basically I'm going to be using and the reason why I do like the Hansa is because they give you so many uh, options that you can do alongside your, fil your film print simulation so now I'm going to pick the Kodak 2383 film print and then as you can see this is the Kodak just remember that my deliverable it is required to make it as it was shot on film but a bit overexposed that is what the client want to see so now i'm actually going to go to my film grain and i've picked 35 millimeter iso 250 and i'm just going to make the amount a bit less so i don't want it to kind of like overtaking my shot and every other thing i'm going to leave it there and i'll come back here later on when i want to work on so many other things and once i actually start to um put your film print emulation it becomes an easy process because from now on you just need to pull and push and basically be able to um, do everything else that you need so one thing that i'm going to do i'm going to my first adjustment and i'm just going to push the lift down just a bit and i'm going to um, leave it there and one thing that i'm going to do I'm actually going to add the saturation because I like to see um, everything else that I add to my clip when the saturation is on and see how it's affecting how people view my deliverable. So that is what we are going to do. I'm going to go to the saturation node and then I'm going to go to color space and then I'm going to go to HSV and then I'm going to go back to my channel and I'm going to click channel one and then I'm also going to click to channel three, which means we have these two channel here that can help us to get that good saturation. Also, if you do not use the saturation technique, comment below and I will talk about it more so you can learn how to get that good saturation that looks very cinematic in your project. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to add some saturation into our image and basically, it's gonna make it look nicer so that is before and that is after before and after and one thing that i'm actually noticing that this is looking good but it's a bit warmer than i wanted so one thing that i'm going to do i'm going to go back into my dehancer and then i'm gonna go back to the print and i'm gonna play with the uh, targeted whites so as you can see this is too much but this is too warm so i'm going to play with it to when i feel like it fits with what i um want or what does my deliverable requires so this is again is too warm but i feel like i'm going to leave it just there and i'm going to click that off something that i'm noticing with this um scene is that basically i want there to be a bit of vignetting so we can at least have some attention on adriana which which would be very nice so i'm going to go back again into the handsome and i'm going to look for vignettes and i'm going to enable vignette as you do that as you can see it kind of like block everything else 
on the side and she kind of like have some attention to her which is what i prefer but i'm actually going to do that a bit more so i'm going to play with the size of the vignette which uh, you can see this is too much but i'm going to leave it maybe there another thing that i'm going to do i'm going to play with the ratio so again i can actually see everything here if i add the exposure you can actually see how everything looks so i'm actually gonna take it there so this i'm happy with this if i show you before and after before and after but i'm also gonna add just a little bit of that and that is that so again now i'm going to leave um the answer and i'm gonna come back to these two adjustments so i'm gonna go back to the again i'm going to push up just a little bit and then i have to check everything i'm happy with this and then i'm also gonna go back to the offset and just push a little bit and then one thing that i need to do i'm gonna go back to the gamma again and push so this to me is looking very very good but remember when you're doing this on your project you need to go with what look right for you and one thing that you need to understand everything that i'm doing here is very subjective it depending on you and how much your eyes see color how much your monitor is calibrated and basically what your client want and to me this sound just right another thing that i do as you can see i've actually left so much here on the parallel where i have to pick everything so there's the product that she have and there's a towel and everything here's where i'll have to go in later on and basically add or take on any of this value which i'm not going to do now so i'm just going to make sure that I just play with this a bit so it can look a bit nicer so we are going to add some mid-tone and then a bit of contrast and um, I'm actually need to put the shadow a bit up because I really don't like how that is looking and that is what we have so as you can see um this is before and this is after this is before and this is after another thing that I'm going to do I'm actually going to come back in to Dehancer and I go back to my print and I just want to play with the tonal contrast and just it does add more of uh, if you can see now before and after so you just have to play with it as I mentioned until when you like what you're seeing and I'm also going to do a bit of the color density again this is um, more of it which is good and i am going to leave it there so as you can see we went from uh, this which was very flat and this is what we have achieved which is looking very promising one thing that i'm going to do i'm actually going to go to my playback and add the resolution up so i can actually see um, properly so if you do have the answer it's very good to actually not use the answer as the last node and here you can actually add contrast bob or sharpness or noise reduction or basically anything that you want that fit within your profile so as you can see this is how you get the um, film print emulation using the answer and in my opinion is a very straightforward method that you can also implement into your next project so guys that is it for today if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell icon so you don't miss when i post another video like this nice seeing you and thank you for watching